Hello and welcome back to X-Plane 11. Thank you very much for joining me in this video. And today I'm going to be taking a look at Active Sky XP. That's right. Uh, Active Sky has been released for X-Plane a few weeks ago. Uh, unfortunately, because I was doing reviews of other products, the Fantastic Orbex series, I did not get a chance to have a look at Active Sky. But here I am having a look at it now. And in the next uh, 20 to 30 minutes, I'm going to be having a look at the interface i'm going to be having a look at the program what it gives uh, what it's like to use and also we'll take to the skies and we'll see how well things are implemented in x-plane now if you've watched my previous couple of videos you'll note that i was using active sky in those i think i did mention it in one of them that i was using active sky but a few things weren't set up correctly i've gone through the things tried to set up a few things better still working on it but we shall see what happens. So make sure you stay tuned for the rest of this episode to get a full review on Active Sky XP, which I have now used for quite a few hours. Okay, so starting off one of the first things that we're going to have a look at is once you've once you've purchased the product and it it is a bit of a purchase i think it's a uh, it's about 30 pounds or something like that i'm not i'm not entirely sure 20 25 to 30 pounds somewhere somewhere around that price i think when i purchased it uh, so it isn't cheap it's definitely not cheap but we're going to see just what it can do for the price so the first thing we're going to note is that the textures I'm using for the clouds, Active Sky does come with its own texture. So you can see there, if I click that, because we're going to uh, install these Active Sky uh, cloud textures. Now, it doesn't change everything out. It doesn't change all the weather out in the title. Just these cloud textures is one of the main things. They have made it very clear that this is a weather engine, not uh, an injection engine for all these different types of effects and uh, all you know this that and the other this is primarily a weather engine they are going to be working on an engine that gives them all the extra bits and bobs uh, as you might expect from i don't know um rex for for prepared and flight simulator so real environment extreme uh, in fact that's what i used to use i used to use rex combined with active sky for flight simulator so that's what i had that was a very long time ago anyway Going back to this, uh, I did not use these textures, the cloud textures. I actually used the 3J clouds, which you can find on the X-Plane, uh, I suppose the X-Plane forums. And you can find the 3J clouds. I think they're really nice. But everything else is, of course, exactly the same, apart from FS Enhancer giving me the colors. So somebody was asking in the comments last week, FS Enhancer gives me the colors for the sky. Um, the 3J clouds is giving me the clouds itself and and that really just changes the fluffiness of the clouds and stuff like that and active sky is now controlling my weather for the most part so let's have a look this is the interface we get we've got the version we've got the uh, weather mode we've got the connection so it connects to explain so it detects your sim uh, activity idle not doing anything and the eric cycle uh, which is currently is 1601 i thought that should be 1701 or 1703 or something I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to have to check that. Anyway, aside from that, the first thing that you probably need to have a look at is WX Control, because this is where most of your stuff's going to happen. This is where you're going to get things going. Now, you can have custom weather. I'll show you how custom weather works in a minute. But you can have live weather, and in which case, uh, actual weather reports in real time. There you go. It says there weather conditions updated automatically from actual weather reports in real time. Now, I don't particularly like this mode because I'm never flying in real time. So it's very rare for me to be flying at exactly the time that I am flying. This is something you may have noticed when I was looking at a few uh, other products, some of the free downloads. One of the biggest problems I had was I was getting real world weather, but I was having to go back in time so that things were lit up because where I'm recording it's night and unless I was going to do all my videos in America it would be night or in Australia where it would be morning so that was a problem for me this allows us to have historical weather now I'm not going to show you the map with live weather historical weather is going to do the exact same thing so we click historical weather and you can select your time 
and day so this is exactly what it is currently i'm recording this on the 5th of february it is a 2010 utc so that's what we've got now if i went to live weather and went uh had a look at that you'll see that there's a slight difference you see that now i believe that that difference is that's the last time a weather report was generated so for this time that was the last time a weather report was generated and to double check that i am actually going to jump onto the internet right now whilst i'm talking to you guys and pull up a meta for uh london heathrow why not let's see and this should tell me exactly what time it was updated and the last update for it was in fact not at 1956 it was 1950 was the last update but fair enough okay so we've got that now historical weather can come in from the sim so if you go force historical time to sim time like that whatever i set up here when i get in the sim it's going to give me so i can go january february whatever now the only thing the only downside about this is that in the sim i can't go back to last year that's the only bad thing that's something x plane i think need to work on themselves so if i do that i have no idea what's going to happen but i am going to try so we're going to go august 20th we're going to go um seven o'clock i'm going to go done i'm going to find uh bristol filton airport that's where we're going to do our little flight from yeah we'll go from the east apron now we'll just line up on two uh, i'll decide this in a minute i'll decide this one in a minute and the reason i'm going to decide it in a minute is given that we're looking at the 20th of august i am going to go here and i'm going to see if i can pull up the 20th of and we can use the standard windows thing right here we're going to go actually i'm going to go to 2018 august 20th and i'm going to go to 1900 hours now I can just do this. So at this point, I can't force historical time to sim time because I need to have that match. The only downside there is if, of, co of course, if I pause the sim, then this is not going to pause as far as I know. Anyway, we can now go to map. And once the map loads in, in fact, that is the map loaded in, it seems. Is that really what it was then? It was terrible weather on the 20th of August. Oh, it really was terrible weather. All right, let's not do the 20th of August. Let's go for the 18th of August. Can't reload. Sometimes you have to press, you have to press F5 to sometimes reload. You can see that it's still reading 20th of August, unfortunately. There are a few, few little bugs that are found in this, um, but for the most part, it does work without a hitch well whilst that's doing that I I actually am assuming oops go back I'm wondering if it's picked it up from here for some reason 18th go on no it's not from here okay well what I'm going to do is I'm going to go live weather back to that and pick 18th of August so small bugs but that's the point of this review I'm going to see it as it's working along this isn't the first time that's happened to me and I'll do 19 all right 15 whatever nope that's the 5th of February that's not what I want come on give me the right date give me the right date there we go right okay we have to click this there that's what it is that's my own fault then apparently when you change it you should click this it's probably what that means refresh there you go, I've learnt something. Alright, so we had some rain coming in from the Cardiff side on the on the 18th of August. It was 17 degrees at this point in time. That's not too bad. Wind 234 at 6, 240 at 6 from Bristol and Filton. So 234 at 6, I can now decide where to start my, my takeoff pretty easily. So it's 234, I'm going to go for 27. Yep, that's going to help me, so... We're going to have uh, winds coming in, what, this way? So we'll, we'll sort that out. 
that's absolutely fine. Yeah, I'm going to use the arrow again because I absolutely love the arrow. Uh, it's a brilliant, brilliant aircraft. And all we're going to do is we're going to take off and have a bit of a fly around. So you can see we've got uh, scattered clouds at 1,200 feet, broken clouds at 1,600 feet, 17.5 degrees Celsius, 2.16.8, altimeter 1021. Now, on top of this, we do have more that we can have a look at. So this is just the first part of it. As you can see here, we could pull up airports. We've got navigation aids that we could pull up. So that's all the VORs and the uh, NDBs coming up. So there's a VOR there for uh, Brecon. We've got Cardiff NDB. We've got the Filton, Bristol NDB, uh, Yovelton VORs, so on and so forth. We've got our precipitation. So there you go. It tells you uh, how much it's raining, if it's raining in places, which uh, apparently it's not here anymore. No, 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 it's it. It is. I think it's just trying to work it out. Come on. 2016 local. Um, we've got that. We've got clouds. Looks like there's a lot of clouds down here. I think it's still lo it was loading it in. Traffic, I think that's for VATSIM. Visibility, it gives us visibility here. So at the moment, we don't have any problems. We have wind coming in. If we take a good look at it at points. We've got shear, wind shear, and we've got any warnings. So that's that can all come up. And if we forecast forward, let's have a look at what's coming up for us. There you go. You can see the forecast. So right now, there we go. That's better. It's loaded it in. So that's what the weather is. And we can forecast forward because obviously you're not going to be flying in one go. And as you can see, that rain is definitely going to get somewhat heavier in fact a lot heavier 12 hours from now that's what the forecast is so you can see that although it doesn't seem to be moving that rain doesn't seem to be moving it seems to be focused more in that area around Cardiff now the other thing is we've got conditions over here now this allows us to get accurate winds aloft so for example Filton is Echo Golf Tango Golf let's uh, bring in Echo Golf Tango Golf there you go, Filton, private, lovely, uh, and here we go. So, last updated, that's 1855 Sulu. That's our latitude and longitude, our elevation. It is uh, 68, uh, 223 feet above sea level. Station type, Metartaf and an airport. There's our ICAO ID. That's our winds aloft, pretty much. So, we've got our winds and temperatures. So, you can see that... After 18,000 feet, or between 12 and 18,000 feet, that's 6,000 feet, there's quite a jump in terms of temperature. As you can see, and you can see there, 3,000 feet, 14 degrees, 6,000. So if we're flying at any, to any altitude up to about 9,000 feet, we are not going to need any form of anti-ice whatsoever. Normally, you bring it on under uh, 10 degrees Celsius, but uh, that's going to be fine. But we can see that we have a bit of winds at 6,000 feet and 3,000 feet as well. So it is fairly windy up there. This is our full metal right there. So you can see that's our date. There's our time, Zulu. Winds 2, 3, 4 at 6 knots. Visibility well, greater than 10 kilometers. Scattered clouds at 900. Bro broken clouds at 1,300. Temperature 18, dew point 17, QNH 1021. Some remarks. I think the remark is advanced interpolation. Then it decodes it for us. And then we've got surface wind interpolations over here so that helps us work out all the surface wind now if you fly into this area without having defined it as a flight plan the metal will be this that's what we're going to get as our metal now you can see there that that and that do not match 240 at 5 234 at 6 Scattered clouds at 600, broken at 1,000. Scattered at 9, broken at 1,300. The reason being is that it is being affected by this one. Echo Golf Golf Delta, which is Bristol International. So it's being, it's being uh, influenced by that one, and they're going to have to work it out. Now, what that means is that something that is highly recommended by these guys is to file a flight plan now let's say we are going to be doing our flight plan today i'll bring up the airports i'll switch off that and i'll switch off the clouds let's do a flight plan today we're going to go from filton and i'm just going to fly towards 
Well, I'm not actually going to go this way, but we're going to fly towards Bournemouth. So we're going to go Ekogov Hotel Hotel. Or should we fly towards Southampton? Ekogov Hotel India. This one here. Sure, we'll do towards Southampton. So we'll do Ekogov Tango Golf, Ekogov Hotel India. So we'll go Echo, oops. Echo Golf Tango Golf. Destination Echo Golf Hotel India. Cruise altitude, we're going to go, let's go up to 6,000 feet. Climb rate is going to be 500 foot per minute. Climb speed is going to be around 90 knots. Cruise speed is going to be about 130 knots, let's say. Descent rate is going to be 500. We're going to be descending at 100 knots. Montenegro is going to be Bournemouth, Echo Golf Hotel, Hotel. We can then do uh, refresh. Oh no, select an auto routing type. It does an auto route type. We can do direct GPS, VOR to VOR, VOR and NDB. So let's just do that and see what comes up. There you go. There's our flight plan. Now, the reason this is important is that this allows Active Sky to smoothly go through the weather. And that's really important. We don't want to have weather jumping here and there. And if you don't have this flight plan, it will still work. Not a problem. But it will cause issues potentially with weather suddenly changing or weather jumping, things like that, because it doesn't know where you're going. So it's having to load things in as you're going whilst with this it's worked it's worked it out and it knows where you are going so it can load in the weather ready to go and it'll average out and smooth out the weather at least that's what i understand of what it's doing here on top of that we can have a briefing so you can see that now we could play this briefing Standard weather briefing for Echo Golf Tango Golf 2 Echo Golf Hotel India. No SIGMETs active for your route of flight. No airmets active for your route of flight. Current weather conditions for your departure. Wind 2, 3, 5 at 6. Visibility 1, 0, 1000. Sky condition 9 or 100. Scattered ceiling 1,300. Broken temperature 1, 8, 2.17. QNH 1021 for the destination. Wind 2, 3, 1 at 8. Visibility 1, 0, 1000. Sky condition ceiling 2,300. Broken temperature 1, 8, 2.13. QNH 1021 for your alternate. Wind. Zero zero one at seven visibility one zero thousand sky condition ceiling two thousand six hundred broken temperature one eight two point one five Q and H one zero two one forecast conditions for your departure wind two three five anyway. at six visibility one zero I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut him up now because um as you can see it's not bad it's it is handy a little bit annoying I will be on honest but it does give us all the information now, over here it does give us a whole bunch of information so it says it's going to take us 34 minutes to fly there i'm not going to be doing the entire flight uh sorry 24 minutes not 34 minutes um going to be doing that although it does say calculate flying uh, i suppose zero feet to make sense um because we're going to be on the ground but 24 minutes is going to get we're going to get there 16 minutes there 15 minutes to that and it gives us all our expected weather conditions so it's going to be fairly windy where we're expecting to be so that's not going to be bad. That's going to be a little bit bad. That's going to be a little bit bad. It's going to be about 12 degrees Celsius at that. 18 degrees when we land at uh, at um, Southampton. And so on and so forth. So that's pretty cool. On top of that, we can do any searches. So we can do a whole bunch of searches as we want for whatever we want, which is pretty neat. Um, the flight plan I've shown you. Conditions. We could pull up any condition from any airport just like that. And then, of course, on the map, you can see it's just telling us, essentially, just do that. That's what it's telling us. So, really, we're going to be heading towards Boscombe Down. Uh, and it looks like we're going to be going in 108.2. Is it 108.2? I have no idea. We'll use Avitam for that. Not, not supposed to be using this for this. Anyway, so you can see, there we go. And uh, the rain seems to have disappeared again. In any case, so it's now 1919 because, or 1923. The reason being is that because we have spent all this time working on it. So all this time it has been going forwards. If we've got WS control, you see we have gone forward a little bit, it seems, in time. Um, not massively, but a little bit. At least I've seen this go forward. I'm not sure if that's entirely accurate. Aside from that, that is all, I think, in a nutshell, what Active Sky is. Now, the best way to have a look at this is to see it in action. Okay, so here we are in X-Plane, ready to go. Um, 
lined up at runway 27 and you can see the clouds actually ahead if I go outside you can actually see the clouds all around which looks awesome so they're pretty low clouds and we are going to be climbing straight through them I'm hoping uh, I might actually switch reshade off here I'm not sure I don't have a reshade that works brilliantly at night yet uh, anyway let's get this let's get this aircraft in the air hopefully I'll remember how to do this it's been a while since I've flown this aircraft I know you only saw it last uh, the last episode but it has been a while Settle for a 500 foot per minute climb. As we want. Nice and gentle. That's too gentle. There we go. Perfect. All right, so we're slightly over 90 knots, but we're doing a roughly 500 foot per minute climb as we get through it. And there you go. You can see just there. The that's one of the only downsides I find of X plane at the moment. I don't think there's anything they can do about it, and that is this um, this issue with. Oh, you know what? I haven't changed, actually. I should have really changed the barometric pressure. There you go. Seems pressing B ruined everything. Interesting. I wonder if B is assigned to something else as well. But anyway, let's turn around this way and start heading towards where we're supposed to be going. So it's obviously it's raining in that direction direction at all. Our turn is not coordinated at all for some bizarre reason. In fact our aircraft just doesn't seem to be that turn coordinated doesn't seem to be showing correct or reading a correct value anymore. In addition to that it seems that our vertical speed indicator is a little bit off as well. say we don't seem to be climbing but we are climbing now we're definitely climbing now there we go it's better now look if I've got that 500 foot per minute it doesn't seem to be responding correctly you know what it is but it's that although I doubt that would be causing all the trouble anyway into the clouds we go and this is the next problem this is a problem I have found currently with X-Plane and that is the strobe lights seem to be reflecting ridiculously when we go into clouds but we're not going to worry about that at the moment I'm more concerned about actually getting through these clouds and heading in the right direction which isn't south come on so we're about heading of 150 and you can see how different it is now to fly an X-Plane. I'm being thrown around massively. Um, and this is something I've not experienced before in, in X-Plane at all. And this is all to do with the configuration that I'm working on, trying to get this to accurately represent flying. So at the moment, I feel like maybe it's a bit too strong. And obviously that's, that's causing me issues. Right. 
let's really start getting ourselves up to speed now. It's about 3,000 feet. And we're about to go straight back into clouds. As I said, we're going to climb to six. There we go. And as we know at this point, it's really important to use the instruments to keep your aircraft flying how you want it to fly. Which at the moment it isn't for me. Because I'm just getting thrown around. I'm getting absolutely thrown around at the moment. You can just see my vertical speed going crazy. And again, I'm just not sure why it's doing that. And if you compare it to my attitude indicator, I'm not actually going up and down as much as it seems. But there we have it, unfortunately. I'll try and get out of these clouds. In a light aircraft, this is bad. This is not the kind of condition you want to be flying in. But it is giving you a good representation of active sky and how fantastic it is in terms of what I can see. All right, I've gone, come out of another layer of cloud at 4,000. Now, I can see more, the, the only thing here is that I can't see clouds below me. As, as you may have noticed, I can see clouds above me. I'm going into, oh, I am going to switch this off. There you go. Looks a bit more dull now, but I think it's a better representation. And it's trying to, we're trying to get back into the clouds. Now, at the moment, this is the best, I think, that they can represent in X-Plane 11. There's a reload of the clouds. I tell you what, let's level off at 5,000 feet. Do that. Stick that where it is. Actually, yeah, do that 5,900. That will do quite nicely. So, um, bring that prop down. Bring that mixture back. Love it. Okay, and I suppose we should probably switch that light on. And I guess we, should, we could switch those anti-collision lights back on. But you can see here that a bit of a demonstration of active sky in itself. Very overcast. We are just below the cloud layer. It does look a little bit odd. I mean, if we go outside, I'll go and do this. And... This is a combination, once again, of the... Let's make that nice and quiet. Uh, a combination of the clouds that are the, is it the 3J clouds, as well as Active Sky trying to implement them and saying, right, where is the layer of clouds? And this is what we're getting. Which looks rather ominous in this case. But in terms of winds, it's accurately represented. What I will say is that We've got this up here. You'd think it'd be a lot darker down here. And I'm kind of hoping that that's something they're working on. Is that something like this, this overcast kind of cloud, should be a lot darker on the ground. We should have a lot more darkness. And that's what's missing. And I think that's what's throwing me off at the moment. So this is, like I said, my first look, my review of this. And this is what I am seeing. See, so yeah, I, I would have thought that was a lot darker. This would all be a lot darker. Just everything would seem a lot darker. But unfortunately at the moment, at this point in time, at the moment it doesn't. May I open that? Probably not. Not yet anyway. Uh, I'm not going to bother doing a climb anymore. That we're just going to fly in that direction and see. I mean, what you can see is that the visibility is, is different here. Uh, it's actually rather nice. Okay. That's what I was waiting for. It looks like it's just taking a time, some time for it to figure it out. 
But there we go. Now we're talking more. This is more realistic. There we go. So it's just taken time. But now the clouds are actually have darkened the ground and everything. And that looks far more. That looks far better. Now I can say I quite like this a lot more. And one thing I do really like, though, is the wind. Uh, though I haven't quite got to grips with them at the moment for some, for some bizarre reason. I, I'm not sure what it is that causes the winds to, to be in the way they are. Or especially, uh, the biggest one that I have a problem with is, is crosswind uh, on landing. It, it just seems to throw me around rather significantly. But it's pretty cool. The winds are pretty cool. I, I mean, you can see here that I am doing... 120 knots indicated, but if you look at the GNS 430, is it the GNS 430? Was it the 530? Whatever this one is. What is this one? 530, yes. If you have a look at the GNS 530, you'll see that my ground speed is 150 knots. I am going very fast because the wind is behind me. And you, could t you can tell that because we did say that the wind was coming in from something like this direction. So it's coming in from this direction, so it is pushing me along. And we said it was about a 20 knot wind, 21 knots, something like that. So you can see that that's not too far off, given that we're almost at 130, doing 152. That's a pretty strong wind at this level. That's been sort of interpolated and estimated according to what other information we had. So with that, that's really awesome. Uh, the downsides of this is obviously the sort of the reloading and stuff like that. You saw that that took a while for it to, for some reason, figure out what was going on. Now, it's not night. It is not dark right now. At this point in time in August, it is still sunset. In fact, if you look out in the distance, you can still see the sky a little bit. You can still see over there. You can see a bit of that and over there. Oh, that's just a city. Yeah, it's a city, never mind. But you can see that sort of the, the lighter area of the sky. Because it is still daytime. It is still daytime in the UK. It's coming close to sunset, but not quite there yet. As a matter of fact, what I'm going to do now is to end this video, I'm going to climb. We can get ourselves into a nice climb. It's going to be a little bit difficult, I think. But I'm going to try and get us to climb. Now we're at 5,000 feet. Come on. There we go. Let's bring that prop up again. Bring that mixture up again. And just slowly lift that nose we're going to see if we can get straight through these clouds and you'll see what what the actual weather is as we go up although it is difficult maybe that's because this aircraft is quite underpowered I mean this isn't a fast aircraft it's a lovely aircraft though but it's not that fast and this does bring uh, a little bit more fear into flying I always found in X-Plane it was rather easy to fly an aircraft, even with crosswinds and whatnot. It was actually rather easy to fly an aircraft. This makes it a lot harder. Whether it's more realistic, I'm still trying to work that out. One of the options in the configuration for Active Sky is simple mode and realistic mode. Now I've got it in realistic mode, but I think certain things maybe are clashing with Active Sky, and that's giving us problems. In fact, I do think certain things are clashing. I've just had a thought. No, this is off. So no, it's not that. That's not a that's not a clash at all. And uh, if we have a look at the map, let's find out exactly where we are. Trowbridge. We've gone past Bath. We're going into the area of Boscombe Down. And there we go, heading up towards Southampton quite nicely. But as I said, what we're going to do is we're just going to climb. And let's really bring that prop up. There we go. Just keep climbing. 
6,000 feet, we still haven't got into the clouds. And we're just going to keep this aircraft climbing. I think this aircraft has a ceiling of 14,000. Now I'll find out. I'll know what the ceiling is. Just keep it climbing. We're almost at 7,000. I want to get back into the clouds. I'm going to switch this off again. That one. Okay, now, look at that. You can just see how close we are to the clouds. Or at least the, the base of the clouds. In fact, it looks like we're actually going into them. It does look like we're going into them at this point. Because look at the... Look at things disappearing. It's a really interesting... Yep, we're definitely going into them. It's very difficult to see, though, in a sense. But this is probably the best example of being able to go into clouds. There you go. So now we're right at the we're right at the bottom of the clouds. We are, and you can see how the ground is all sort of fading away. We can see the lights, but we can't actually see the ground all too well. That's slowing down to 90 knots at the moment because of the climb being really awkward. But that's okay. 90 knot climb is alright for us. Yes, no, no strobes at the moment. 8,000 feet, still not into them properly. Sort of forcing our way in. Come on. Anyway, I hope that this has been a good uh, sort of preview, not really a preview, but a first look and a review at uh, Active Sky XP. Oh, that's lovely. That's actually really nice. I sort of see the sky above it. I really should have brought this volume up again, didn't I? I forgot to bring this volume up. That's okay. This was supposed to be at that, but... That's all right. Leave a comment in the comments box below, letting me know what you think. Don't forget to support me on Patreon, www.patreon.com slash ECCasia. I wonder if this is going to flash up everything. They don't want to flash whatsoever. Really? And they just don't want to flash. How bizarre. Fine. Leave a comment in the comments box below, as I said, letting me know what you think and support me on Patreon. You can also find me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash ecgadget, and you can find me on social media at ecgadgetlp for both Twitter and Instagram. This is quite ominous as we're going in. Take a look outside. This is what we're seeing outside. And that really does look rather nice. That really does. There you go. You can see the clouds now clearly below us, above us, all around us. It's not perfect. Um, that might make it look a little bit better. I doubt it, though. No, it doesn't. It's got this weird thing going on. It's not making it look any better. Anyway, still can't get a climb out of this, a proper climb. I'm trying. I'm really trying. But anyway, that's all from me. And I'll see you guys next time in X-Plane 11 where... Well, I'll certainly be using Active Sky. But we'll see uh, just what we get out of it. I think I'm reaching the ceiling of this aircraft. I think. At least for these conditions. Well, anyway. I'll see you guys then.